Tomorrow, the 24th of April 2016, is a very important day in Ireland for two reasons, one looking backwards and one looking forwards. Looking backwards, we're going to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the start of the Easter Rising on Easter Monday, 1916. The start of a six or seven year revolution which led to the establishment of an Irish Republic and a democracy where we have all, as citizens, the right to be treated equally and we have a responsibility to act in order to protect that democracy. The second important event to happen tomorrow is that this is the day on which we are asked to fill out our census forms for 2016. Essentially this census in 2016 requires us to stand up and be counted. This is an example of a census form which every household in the country, presumably at this stage, has had delivered to them. And this is the form that we are all required to fill out on Sunday the 24th of April 2016. Filling out the census is a serious business. As you will see from the front page of the census and the legal obligation we all have to participate with the threat of a fine of €4,440 Euros if you fail to provide information or provide false information. On the other hand, please note that your confidentiality is guaranteed in this document by the Statistics Act 1993 and this is underpinned by the personal signature of Porrick Dalton Director General of the CSO, the Central Statistics Office. You will see from this part of the Statistics Act 1993 how important the protection of information is considered in this Act. Furthermore, on the home page of the CSO website, you will see very laudable statements made here about the CSO's Code of Practice on Statistical Confidentiality. And in order yet again to confirm your level of reassurance and confidence that your data will be held, protected, securitized and not released in any way is the FAQ section where you are guaranteed once again that this information will not be given to anybody else or released. My name is Liam O'Gogon and I'd like to welcome you to another short video in this series of a research question that is my prime passion called Does It Matter? In this particular video I want to interrogate the question of this confidentiality as practiced by the CSO. I will bring for your attention evidence of at least two breaches of confidentiality in the present time frame by the CSO, which in its essence prevents me as a citizen from complying with my civic duty in filling out my census form because of a greater civic duty to stand up and be counted and to expose a fundamental abuse of the protection of our data by the CSO officials. This video is essentially about the breaking of trust and fundamentally I argue that our trust as citizens in the absolute confidentiality and professional treatment of our data is a fundamental prerequisite for any of us to release our personal data to the CSO. Sadly this quotation taken from the film Lord of War starring Nicolas Cage and the quote being those who care don't know, those who know don't care is all too common in the Ireland of 2016 where the concept of light touch, soft touch, in fact zero regulation is a direct threat to each and every citizen of the country. The value proposition that's presented to all of us citizens by the imagery of the Central Statistics Office is that whole idea of standards and quality. The idea that these people whose core business is to collect, to collate, to organise, to analyse, to manipulate data that at every level they would act in the public interest and never do anything which was either unfair or in breach of either their own undertakings or of their legal requirements. The document which I'm now presenting to you is essentially a master document where I have collected and collated all of my correspondence with the Central Statistics Office in relation to my application for a job as census enumerator for this census 2016. You will see from this information taken from the census.ie website that in order to underpin the concept of due process and a fair opportunity for every applicant for the job, the fact that the possibility of giving preference to a person at the live register was actively con examined by the CSO. However, in light of the need to conduct this recruitment within the strict recruitment principles that apply to all public sector appointments, 
In practice, it has not been open to the CSO to discriminate in favour of any one group of people over another, be they on the live register or otherwise. For background information, my understanding is there were something like 15,000 applicants for these positions throughout the country, for some 4,600 positions, that something under 10,000 people actually presented for interview. So there was a 50-50 chance of people getting this job, a one in two chance throughout the country. My personal journey with the census enumerator position began sometime back in early January, where I made an application for the role. I was then, as you can see from this aim, email on the 22nd of January, invited to an interview. And this point was stressed, that the CSO was committed to ensuring that our interview is fair to all candidates. So I went to an interview process. Prior to doing that, I had presented them with my CV, and I was in full expectation that I would experience a fair, open, and due process. I attended that interview as agreed. I provided all the required documentation, and in my view, and with my long experience of both interviewing and being interviewed, I believe I had a very successful interview with questions which were not at all tasking and in which no specific examinable type questions were put to me. However, on the 24th of February 2016, the date of my 60th birthday, I got a short note signed by Val McBride, the assistant principal of the census recruitment for the CSO, thanking me for turning up and showing my interest and regretfully saying I hadn't been successful in my application on this occasion. I was very surprised at this because I believe I had done quite a good interview and that the requirements as specified were not in my view difficult to meet and in every question which was a prerequisite I believe I had satisfied the requirements. So in light of the undertaking that had been given to me prior to go to interview that the CSO was committed to ensuring our interview process is fair to all candidates and as a result of my surprise, separate from my disappointment for not having been successful in, in getting a job offer, and also against the backdrop of the larger research project which I have been committed to since 2012 called Does It Matter? I decided to essentially interrogate the process of the enumeration interview and job evaluation to confirm or otherwise that the standards of quality, due process, openness and transparency met with the value proposition that is presented by the CSO, that of a high quality, secure, safe and reliable process. That same day, the 24th of February, I replied to the census recruitment at CSO.ie with a very simple request, asking them to email me by return all links and references as to my right to appeal the decision and my right to information, me re my evaluation, scoring matrix, etc. A very succinct, unambiguous and unequivocal request. Five days later, having not received either an acknowledgement of receipt nor a response to my previous email, I sent a reminder number one to the same address. This second email was acknowledged a few hours later by Marcella Joyce, who undertook to be in touch within the coming days. A number of days later, I received a phone call at 12.44 on the 7th of March from Marcella Joyce, who said she was following up on my email and decided to ring me in order to clarify what exactly I was seeking. I will analyse the contents of that conversation in a separate video, but let me summate here particularly with the elements which I followed up in a subsequent email less than a half an hour later to Marcella in which I specifically specified that I wished to seek the data that I was requesting in electronic format. And just to reiterate once more, in my initial communication with the census recruitment people, again, I stated quite clearly that I wished to have the data sent to me by email, that's electronic format. And this is relevant in terms of the subsequent event. During the conversation with Marcel on the 7th of March, I made it quite clear that I would not accept any obfuscation or delaying of information with, to which I was legally entitled, and also made it quite clear that I did not want to be provided with personal information of anybody else, purely that information which I was entitled to under the FOI. I emphasize at this point, and a further video analysis will 
give evidence of the fact that, that Marcella Joyce, during that conversation, at best discouraged any expectation that I might have of either an appeals process or review of my interview experience, pointing out to me that the short-term contract of census enumeration would have expired by the time an appeals process would be put in place. In this email, I also emphasized the short timelines that are involved in terms of having a turnaround on an appeals process. And then on the 10th of March, I followed up with another email saying I hadn't heard back from Marcella in relation to the information which I understood she was going to send out to me without any delay. Again, I got a fairly immediate response claiming that the information or the reply would be sent to me the following day.